Hey, what's going on everyone? Today's video will try to encapsulate everything that I've learned about fish finder technology in the last couple of years. But I'm going to warn you ahead of time, it will be kind of lengthy. If you've been following me for any length of time on YouTube, you know how important I think electronics are. There is no other piece of gear or technique out there that is quite as impactful, in my opinion. Now then, if you don't feel like sitting in for the entire thing, feel free to cut right to the chase toward the end of the video and I'll have some recommendations. So if you go on the internet, there's no shortage of videos where you have really good fishermen hauling in fish. But what you don't see is the other part of the equation, which is where they're doing what it is they're doing. Now, if you took all of their gear, all of their know-how, and all of their technique and fished here, I could almost guarantee you that you're not gonna catch fish. On the other hand, if I gave you a $20 Walmart special and some kitchen scraps and put you on top of this, I would almost guarantee you that you would get bit. You may not be able to land the fish, but I'm pretty sure you would get bit. There's an old saying that goes, 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. Now, before we kick off, I should let you know that I am a Garmin guy. And Garmin doesn't pay me a red cent to shill their gear. They are a multi-billion dollar multinational company. But my experience with Garmin goes way back before kayak fishing. I've spent a lot of time in the outdoors, whether it's backpacking or bicycling or whatever. And I came to the conclusion that their GPS technology was top shelf. Garmin, I could always rely on Garmin to hold and lock a signal under trying conditions, like when I'm under canopy or deep in a canyon. Now you may think, well, sonar is more important, and maybe that's the case, but I think being able to locate and navigate your way back to a very small mark is maybe equally as important. And you need to understand that the government introduces a little bit of um, error with GPS technology so that if you are a bad guy, you can't do ultra precise stuff. And so every bit of extra precision, I think matters. Having said that, I think it's possible that the sonar technology with Lorenz or Raymarine or Hummingbird could be better. I am doubtful because some of the stuff that Garmin is doing with their panoptics and live view is just incredible. Okay, let's dive in and take a look at some of the features that I think are important. Number one is GPS, okay? And that means that you'll be able to look at a map on your fish finder screen. You'll be able to navigate toward the marks that you've put down in the past. Um, every Garmin unit that I know of comes with this feature as a base feature. I do think that some of the other manufacturers omit this feature and I would never buy a fish finder without GPS built in. The next important feature is the traditional 2D sonar, which is shown on the right hand side of the screen. And with this, you can see things like water depth, you can see the bottom, you can see structure, you can see fish. Um, every fish finder will come with this feature. But you do want to choose a fish finder that has the chirp feature. And I don't want to get into like the scientific gory details, but basically what chirp does is it'll spray a bunch of frequencies to give you a more accurate picture. The next feature that a lot of fish finders will have is what's called down view if you are Lorenz or Hummingbird, or clear view if you are Garmin. And on the left hand side, up top, you can see the traditional 2D sonar. And then on the bottom here, you see the clear view or the down view. And what that is, it's, it's kind of like a photorealistic 3D-ish rendition of what you're seeing on the 2D sonar. I think this feature is more important for like shallow water, freshwater fishermen, because I guess it'll enable you to see if um, a structure is either a log or cement. Um, as an ocean fisherman, I really don't care about that kind of stuff. I'm just looking for anomalies and that'll get my attention. Okay, the next couple of features are features that you're gonna find as you move up the food chain and spend more money. And the first of those features is called side view. So you can imagine the traditional sonar being a flashlight that's just shining to the bottom of the lake or the ocean. 
With side view, you can think of it as you have two flashlights on either side of the boat that are shining to the left and shining to the right. Basically, it tries to show you everything that's to the right and to the left of the boat. And again, I think this application is more suited towards shallow water and lake fishermen, but it is kind of cool if you want to cover a lot of ground in shallow water. Now, here's a really important note about using the side view feature, and you should call Lawrence or Garmin to verify. But I think if you want to use this feature, your transducer cannot be inside the hull. I think it has to be outside the hull with zero obstructions. So that means that you may not even be able to install it in like a transducer cavity in a Hobie kayak or otherwise. And finally, some of the high-end units will come with built-in contour maps or the ability to buy and install contour maps via a micro SD slot in Garmin's case. So a contour map is very different than a flat map. And what a contour map tries to show you via these contour lines are changes in elevation. And I think this is a, an absolutely critical feature whether you are a lake fisherman or an ocean fisherman. Finding fish is all about finding structure. And when I say structure, it doesn't always have to be like a huge underwater mountain. Um, structure can be very subtle changes in elevation. And when you have nothing else, those subtle changes in elevation will hold fish. So if you can possibly get this feature, I would get it. I've created a video in the past that kind of explains contour maps. Again, it's not exciting or sexy, but I think understanding contour maps is important whether you're on water or you're somewhere else like mountaineering or backpacking. And I will leave a link in the description. Okay, at this point, we're gonna dive into the Garmin lineup. Now, Garmin kind of takes a two-prong approach like many manufacturers. They have kind of like a mainstream lower-end uh, model, which is called the Striker or Striker Plus. And then they have the higher-end Echo Map or Echo Map Plus. And they share uh, many of the same features, GPS, 2D sonar, clear view, side view plus clear view. So uh, with either line, if you, opt for a model with side view, it will come with clear view. The big difference basically is with the uh, Striker or Striker Plus, you cannot add maps, you cannot you know, purchase maps and then insert using micro SD. The Echo Map series does come with built-in maps and the ability, again, to add maps via the micro SD slot. Okay, let's focus in on the Striker or Striker Plus series. So with the Garmin name, it's going to start with Striker, of course, and every model is going to have the GPS and 2D sonar capabilities. Now, if it's followed by a plus, it means that you can create your contour maps and DIY. So it doesn't come with the built-in contour maps, but you can create your own. So at this point, let me show you some video. So here you're looking at footage of a Striker Plus unit that has the capability of laying down contour lines. And again, if the body of water that you are on doesn't have killer features like big mountains or deep canyons, then it's all about elevation change. And being able to see the elevation changes is such a key feature. So let's take a look at some examples. If you purchase a Garmin Striker 4, it basically means that it has the GPS and 2D sonar, but nothing else, okay? You don't have the ability to create your own contour maps. It's about a four inch or four and a half inch screen, and you don't get clear view or side view. If you opt for the Striker Plus 5 CV, that means that you're gonna be able to create your own contour maps. It's a five inch screen, which is really nice. At the five inch mark, you can split it into left hand side being navigation and right hand side being the traditional 2D sonar. Yeah, if you can spring for the extra screen real estate, I would do it. And then it comes with the clear view built in. And finally, if you opt for the Striker Plus 7SV, that's kind of like at the top of the food chain. So you have the ability to create your own contour maps. It's a seven inch screen and you get the side view and of course the clear view features. Okay, let's move on to the Echo Map series, and this is going to be a little more complicated as you might imagine. 
The Echo Maps will have all the features of the Strikers. So you have the GPS to the sonar, of course. They're gonna come with built-in maps, either oceanic or lake, and I'll explain more later. Um, you can create your own DIY contour maps. And of course, they're gonna have the micro SD slot, which means you can purchase additional maps and upload them into your Echo Map unit. And some of them will have additional features like the active captain and this and that. Those are features that kind of eat up battery life, so I don't use them much, so I'm not going to cover them here. So if the name Echo Map is followed by the word plus, that means that it's going to sport a hybrid touch screen. Now, you know, I'm a kayak fisherman, so I'm not sure that the hybrid touch screen is going to work for me or us because we're always going to have wet fingers and we're, we may have like fish slime. And if you keep touching the screen with wet or slimy fingers, you're going to create a film on the screen that is really hard to get rid of. So I don't know if the plus hybrid touch screen is going to be practical for us kayak fishermen. But again, if you are a boater, um, it may make a lot of sense and make it easier in terms of user interface. So you can compare the hybrid touchscreen where some of the functions are accessed via button and some of the functions are accessed via touching the screen and compare that to the Echo Map series, the older series where everything is done via buttons here. The next component is going to be the first number and that's going to be either 4, 5, 7 or 9 and as you might imagine that denotes the screen size. Again, if you can afford to get the five inch screen, it'll make you much more efficient because you can split the screen into navigation and sonar. That's gonna be followed by a second number and it's gonna be either a three or a four. If you see a three, that means that that particular unit is gonna have built-in maps of freshwater bodies of water. If you see a number four, it's going to have built-in contour maps of the ocean. But wait, there's more. There are transducer implications as well. Let me show you. Here you are looking at a transducer from the 7 series freshwater echo map. Compare this to that. Okay? This is the 4 series transducer. It is significantly bigger. I'm not an engineer, but I guess the theory behind this is Garmin thinks that if you are an ocean fisherman, you're going to be dealing with um, deeper water, obviously, and they're going to need a little more punch to get down to like two, 300 feet. But wait, there's still more. Prepare to be amazed by my artistic skills. This is not a banana, it's actually your kayak or your boat. And we're going to make the assumption that the transducer is somewhere toward the middle of the boat. Now, with the 7 series transducer, the freshwater line, it's going to shoot out a beam that's very wide, let's say like 45 degrees. With the saltwater series, the 4, it's going to shoot out a beam that is much more narrow, 18 degrees. And here's why it matters. Okay, we're gonna time warp back to junior high or high school, I can't remember. These two rows in yellow are going to contain some trigonometry functions that you don't need to focus in on. Just focus in on the lime green cells. And on the left hand side in orange, you have the freshwater three series of transducer. On the blue section, you're going to have the oceanic four series transducer. So what we have here is a spreadsheet where if we punch in the water depth here in the yellow cells, it will give us the diameter of the cone in the lime green cells. So I hope this doesn't get too confusing. Let me introduce some more colors. In yellow, you have the water depth. In the light blue, you have the beam angle coming out of the transducer. And in the lime green, you will have the resulting cone diameter. So if we assume a water depth of 20 feet, Okay, on the left hand side, the freshwater stuff, because the cone angle is so wide, you're going to end up with a cone of about 40 feet in diameter, which is about what you want. Now, if we go over to the ocean side, same water depth, 20, because of the narrow angle, 18, you're going to get a cone diameter of about 13 feet, which is too small, in my opinion. But let's change the parameters to simulate deeper water as an ocean. So I'm going to change 20 to 200. 
and then 20 to 200. Okay, so on the left hand side, the freshwater stuff in 200 feet of water, because of the really wide beam angle, 45 degrees, you're going to end up with a cone diameter of 400 feet. Okay, that's way too big. You can't make heads or tails out of a cone that's 400 feet wide. Now on the ocean side at 200 feet, because of the narrow angle, you're going to end up with the cone diameter of about 130 feet, which is about what you want. And so that kind of summarizes the difference between the transducers and why they have the different uh, cone angles. So basically, I would summarize it by saying if you are predominantly a freshwater guy, then I would stick with the 7 series, the 43, the 53, the 73. If you are predominantly an oceanic fisherman, go with the 4 series, 44, 54, 74, 94. Now I should note that the oceanic series in general will cost you about a hundred bucks more. Okay, let me summarize the Echo Map with some concrete examples. So if you were to purchase the Echo Map 43 CV, that means you're dealing with a uh, screen size around four or four and a half. The three implies it's gonna come with built-in freshwater maps and the freshwater transducer, and you're gonna have the clear view function. If you go with something like an Echo Map 64, six inch screen, four means oceanic maps, and then you'll get the clear view. If you go with something like an Echo Map Plus 74 SV, the plus means you're gonna get that hybrid touch screen. You're gonna get the four series transducer and the oceanic maps, and you'll get the side view plus the clear view features. Okay, if you've stuck with me this far, you are a real trooper. Um, at this point, I'm gonna give you some quick and dirty recommendations. At about the buck 50 mark, I would go with the Striker Plus 4. Don't settle for the regular Striker. The Plus, again, will give you the ability to draw your own contour maps. At about a buck 80, you might want to go with the Striker Plus CV, especially if you are a freshwater guy and it'll give you the clear view feature. Um, from there, I would jump. Oop, this is wrong. From there, I would jump right to about the $300 mark and go with the Echo Map 54 CV, which will come with the oceanic maps. If you are a freshwater guy, go with the 53 CV. Um, at the $400 mark, I would go with the Echo Map 64 CV, and this is the unit that I'm currently running, and I like it. If you are absolutely smitten with the side view feature, it's going to be kind of difficult because you're going to have to go with the older echo map and not the echo map plus because the plus again has the touch screen so you're gonna have to look for uh, an older echo map 74 sv i'm not sure how much it might cost and again if you're a freshwater guy you look for the 73 sv holy macanoli that was a long video hey i hope you guys have a great extended holiday weekend if you have found this video to be even remotely useful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing and hitting the bell so that you are notified of any future videos. As always, thank you for dropping by. I appreciate you. Get out there and have fun, be safe, and we will see you soon. Bye for now.